Welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where they are open for business 24-7, serving hot, fresh food, and Ramon, happy Thursday to you. Happy, happy Thursday, man. Hey, a pre-Friday, as I like to call it at times, because I look forward to the weekend. So, yeah, let's make this happen, man, on let's, Thursday. Let's do this. Uh, you wanted to do an episode about help for Najee Harris and almost yeah. invariably when you think of help for Najee Harris what's what's the first thing that comes to mind offensive uh, line you know yep. mm-hmm. absolutely but, man that's always but this is different this is this is help in a different way this is trying to take some of the burden off him let's talk about whether or not the Steelers should or will go after another running back in some form and what kind of a difference that would make. First of all, do you think they should or will? You know what? I, I think it's always important to always have another running back on your roster. That's going to say as capable, but he needs to be very serviceable. So for when you put him in the game, there's no drop off. And that's not to say that that guy is going to take your thunder, but it's just acknowledging, look, you don't want to be putting a guy in and next thing you know, he's only getting two yards or a yard or he's he doesn't understand the game good enough to where um, he can give the starting running back, Najee Harris, a spell. And I think that's super huge, man, considering, number one, the workload that Najee already had in his rookie year. Not just running the ball, but also catching the ball out of the backfield, too. I thought it was very dynamic in what he showed he could do, but... I'd be honestly wrong if I said he need to do that again. No, he needs to break his reps now. He needs to also have a guy that, that if he has to sit out an entire series, DK, he should be able to do that because of the backup that you that you have and um at the running back position. Now it takes a lot to find a guy, but Pittsburgh has always done a really good job when it comes down to getting a guy like that. Um, I I, I love what Najee can do, but. It'd be even better if he had a partner. And I think the way that today's NFL works, too, you got to have what do you want to call him a thunder and lightning, a quick and a fast or a power and a fast back. You have to have something because you don't go get a first round running back to only last you a year or two years with the yes, workload see, that he's already had. And that's why it's funny that Mike Tomlin has rightly been criticized for running the wheels off uh, running backs. <laughs> Now yeah. you know who you know you know who's been Tomlin's most vocal critic when it comes to running the wheels off. Who's Mike that? Tom, Mike Tomlin himself. He'll actually use the term. He'll actually mm. say, I'm gonna "Run the wheels off the guy." Now, so he gets Le'Veon Bell, second yeah. rounder. They they love him because of his durability that he showed in college. Uh, the shiftiness and everything else, yep. but also the fact that he was constantly out there and didn't fumble. They just saw somebody who looked like a workhorse. So mm-hmm. Lev comes, he takes a zillion touches, but then, mm-hmm. but then D'Angelo Williams is signed. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and D will comes in and gives you guys and the offense, but specifically you guys up front, a totally different feel, doesn't he? It does, man. And it's a good switch up to to where you can kind of dictate what the defense is going to do at that point. Because if you have two backs that, that do something very different, but it's similar in the same sense, because this wasn't the, the beauty of what D. Will and what D'Angelo Williams were also is both could get yards. And it looked different than what they were doing, but the plays were really the same. Le'Veon just hit the hole a little bit different. And that's the beauty of, of having two guys that can do similar things but different outlooks. Or the way it looks on the field is totally different from what you're actually getting. And, again, look at the way Carolina is with Christian McCaffrey. You know what I'm saying? As far as dependency on him. Very similar situations in which, one, you're trying to find the quarterback that's going to work for him. So who do you rely on? You rely on the running back. And looking at, honestly, what Mr. Trubisky has probably been given, or let's say Mason Rudolph or Dwayne Haskins for that matter, or – Malik Willis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm pandering to the crowd a little bit. I'm but sure. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is this. Whoever's going to be at the quarterback is going to rely heavy on what the run game is doing. And I think most efficient offenses will be doing that in general. Uh, run game starts the passing game. Unless you got a very, really good guy like Patrick Mahomes. But even they are looking at Clyde Zero Hilaire 
and saying, hey, we need production out of you to get the run game going. Buffalo went and got a free agent running back this offseason. Look at what the Raiders have also. And uh, was it Josh Jacobs that mm-hmm. they have out there with him? Most yeah. good teams have a good running back. And that running game really helps out the passing game. Whoever's the new settled in starter for this team has to be able to rely on that. So, all right, guys, first series, two runs. We're going to get you going so that I can get going. Ben was even one of those types of guys that was, look, we can get it going until we discover, you know, a a quick out is as good as a five-yard run. You know, but are either one of those guys Ben? No. Either one of those guys, Patrick Mahomes? No, they're not. So you got to be able to substitute the passing game with a startup running game. You don't want that all to be on the back of Najee Harris. Now, we have gone this far into the show talking about another running back without even coming close to (laughs) saying how they're going to get this person or where it's going to come from, or for that matter, why it can't be and won't be Benny Snell or Anthony McFarland. Mm -hmm. However, with all due respect to those two, I don't know. No. I mean, there were some signs from Benny and everything. And I like Benny, too. Benny's a hard downhill runner. The thing is, I don't know why he wasn't getting the touches. And also the other part of it, if that's the case, why is he still on the roster? I have no words for that. I really don't. You know, Every time I saw 24 come onto the field, I'd be like, what are you doing? What yeah. are you doing? But he's uh, still there. He's you still know? he's still there, and purportedly the coach still likes him, and the coach still <laughs> trusts him, particularly mm-hmm. in those types of situations. However, there's an enormous difference between that and what we were just talking about with a D-Will type of runner where you bring in somebody from the outside who's mm-hmm. reliable, who's dependable, who has a little bit of a track record without, of course, for a running back, having too much of a track record. Exactly. I'm not seeing or feeling in any way, shape, or form that this will be a draft pick, Bone. There's just way too much else to address. I I, I would. I I would say they would go draft one. Maybe a fourth, fifth rounder, simply because are you really going to spend more money in free agency when it comes down to it? I would have to revisit the uh, free agent um, uh, free agent list as, 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 as that's available right now. And I'll be in the comments for sure um, to discuss this with the crowd. But I'd say you go draft pick. And you know why? The, de- the, the devaluation of running backs is so high right now that I think you can find a good guy in the fourth or fifth round still. Yeah, but the devaluation of running backs is also very real when it comes to free agency. That's <laughs> you know, <true> too. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm, I'm going to respectfully take the other view here and say, well, no, I'll, I'll I, respect I had, George Sue though. Yeah, yeah, Snell, uh, Snell, and McFarland are those guys. They're what you get in the third and the fourth rounds, and I would much rather see them. Uh, you know, just go find yourself some one year, $3 million guy who's got a recognizable nameplate on the back, <laughs> who you know what he can do. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like a Giovanni Bernard who's always had that role, right? Gio, would you take <laughs> Gio in this offense? Would you I, do I, that? Uh, or something similar. You know, I think that's what we're both getting at. Yeah, that's it. Some somebody that comes in and just, you know, give me two hard series a game, you know, that are effective, yeah. you know? Yeah. Give me that. I think that's a reasonable ask. Yeah. You know? No doubt. When we come back, the next segment of the Ramon Foster show, we'll get into the subject that you wished was our first segment. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. And Moan, we're now going to start getting to the point where we can tell the days of the week by which quarterback the Steelers are visiting on which pro day. Where are they again today? I've lost track. Um, They are at Cincinnati. I think Desmond Ritter. Cincinnati and Desmond yeah. Ritter. And yesterday it was Mississippi and Matt Corral. And the day before yeah. that, it was Malik Willis at Liberty. And of course, at least the first guy had the courtesy to come to their place. With Kenny Pickett and Pitt, <laughs> the rest of them are just logging a whole lot of miles. No, um, no. I, th- since this is the subject of yeah. the day, since this is what nation is talking about right now, right? Are they just saying we don't care who knows? 
we want another quarterback so badly, or are mm-hmm. they just building their books? I I think they're building their books a little bit simply because you got three veteran guys in right now. Like, it's not like Mason's a rookie. No, Dwayne Haskins, not a rookie. Also a former first rounder. Mr. Trubisky, not a rookie. Also a former first rounder. Um, and I, I honestly think they're just, Looking really to add somebody to the room to your point you've made before somebody probably Mason Rudolph is going to end up being trade bait at some point down the line to get draft picks back at some point. Um, And I'm not sure what they're going to get from Mason for what was it third rounder I think coming out. Yep. But picks are very valuable regardless of what's going on. For them to be at Malik Willis's and go up being at dinner, meeting him the night before, or reports that Coach Tomlin was the first one in, and also see Matt Corral at Ole Miss, and then you go up to Cincinnati to see Desmond Ritter, the, the uh, I guess the absence of Ben not being there shows everybody the urgency of Pittsburgh to find a quarterback. Again, I do kind of question it a little bit for – you to be this interested in these young guys considering what's actually coming out next year too. Again, I don't know if this is a a wild goose chase to where, ha ha, we got you guys as far as thinking, you know, we're going to draft a quarterback in the first round or it's to take the eyes off on what they really want. I've seen some people say, you know, I'd rather have the D tackle out of Georgia, Uh, the big boy, uh, uh, Davis. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, wow, Jordan Davis is his name. I'm thinking he would actually better fit a first-round justification at 20 than possibly one of these quarterbacks. Although what we saw from Malik Willis yesterday or the day before with his with his workout says, Pittsburgh really loves this guy. If we don't get him, uh, if somebody else doesn't get him, then he's slated to go to Pittsburgh. Kind of the way you kind of felt about – I think everybody knew the Castro was going to Pittsburgh when he came out. Yeah. I think everybody knew last year Najee was going to Pittsburgh if he was available, and he did. The same way we knew with Marquise going to Pittsburgh whenever he came out. Those are just guys in recent history. And I think Frymouth was another guy. You said, if he's there, Pittsburgh's going to get him. And they did. They never really hit those picks. But we're talking about a franchise guy. Also, with the idea that the quarterbacks in next year's 2023 draft are probably better on paper than these guys are. Yeah, that's why this feels like this feels like a, an extended study session. This feels like what they're <laughs> doing is they're taking all of the information that they possibly mm-hmm. can on this singularly critically important position and saying we are whatever mistake we might make as yeah. it relates to our big quarterback of the future it won't be because we weren't prepared or we didn't go and pursue all of the information at hand so they're going and they're finding all these guys and it's funny moan how with every passing tomlin went to dinner with so and so yeah the previous dinner seems less significant you know what i mean like the first time you found out he was going to dinner with somebody it was like that's it he loves the guy (laughs) but I, i think that they really do like Malik Willis. Okay. Again, we don't know what Matt Canada's offense looked like um, without being as a professional offensive coordinator in the NFL. I looked at his, his, you know, Pitt's film of him at Pitt. It didn't look as if it was slated for the, the runner that we think Malik Willis is, though. I will say that. Kenny Pickett was in that offense for, what, two years while he was at Pitt? Longer, yeah. And longer, longer. Mm-hmm. And the, the time that he won the Heisman was actually without Matt Canada. Right. So what's to be said about what Matt Canada can do with this offense if he does get a guy like Malik Willis? And I, I will say Desmond Ritter is an athletic quarterback and also uh, the kid at Ole Miss is very athletic too. So it could be smoke and mirrors. It could be a wild goose chase and they go get a D tackle because they are, they, they'd rather wait for next year. Well, I'll, I'm going to keep saying this. I, I'll take the D tackle. I'll take Jordan Davis in a heartbeat. Jordan Davis, I, I, man. I, I will take I, – I, you know, actually, you know what? We're going to save this for tomorrow's show because I've been thinking about this for a while, and I, I wanted to throw this at, at you. Okay. The, I, the idea, just to give everybody a little bit of a sneak preview of this, the idea of the – the Steelers' defensive line is a lot like the offensive line. It goes through generations and phases. Yes. And when when you left the offensive line group, 
almost immediately we saw all the other dominoes fall and you know, look on that I, side yep. of other. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. So that's where we're going. Uh, uh, all right. So that's I, where we're I saw this transition my rookie, like second, third year. So I know where you're getting. You were, you were part, you were, you were facing those guys in practice, right? Mm-hmm. When, when we come back, it's the Hey Moan segment and it's gold. <laughs> Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show, and this is always our Hey Moan segment. The way you partake in that is, but you just send a Hey Moan, you know, a question, whatever it is. You can put it in the comments underneath where you find this at DK Pittsburgh Sports. You can put it in the comments under YouTube. We're there all the time anyway, but if you've got something that you really want to stick the man with, you'll come through like my man E did here. E says, hey, Moan, what nicknames did your teammates or coaches give you over the years? And was there a nickname that didn't stick that you liked better than the one that you ended up getting? Uh, Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it for sure. Um, A lot of people just, well, I'll say this about nicknames. If you get a nickname, then you're a guy. You just you just know that, okay? There's, there's rules to getting it, and you see y'all laugh, you laugh because you know it's true. It if is. they just call you by your first, hey Roger, like no, nah, uh, uh-uh, man, it's uh, Roger, man. Roger, it's tough. You yeah, know what I'm, saying? I'm like, one of you. I'm not a practice squad guy. Exactly. Or I'm not Roger a is the practice squad hey, guy. You see what I'm saying? No, give me a name. So <laughs> it goes a lot of different ways with a nickname. One, you can't give yourself your own nickname. That's out the question, okay? We're, we're not doing that. Lev did that. Lev is guilty as charged. Oh, come on. You hey, come know on, that man. he did. You know that he did. <laughs> Lev shows up one day at practice, and he's like, I'm Juice. And you're like, you're what? What? You know who the last running back was that was Juice? White Bronco. You can't, man. You can't do that. Did you notice that that it never stuck? Because you 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 can't can't deliver it yourself. No, 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 absolutely not. Nicknames I've had, of course, like a lot of people call me Big Homie or uh, Big Moan or Moan. Okay, you you shorten the name most of the time. Moan in high school, I was Little Foster because my brother was Big Foster. Oh no. So I've had that. Lil Foster, Big Foster. I'm, I was Lil Foster, okay? I get to the league. Um, and, of course, everybody know the most known one, of course, is the Big Ragu. The Big Ragu okay. is all I had come to mind. But but my teammates never really called me that. I think publicly I'm known as that, but my teammates never called me the Big Ragu. Uh, it's usually just Moan. Or the one that you asked me, the one that stuck was the Big Ragu, and I love Tunch and Wolf for that. R.I.P. to the legend, too, by the way. Just mm-hmm. have to throw that out there. Love that guy by the way touch uh it was those miss, two that gave me that nickname. miss him every single day just had to jump awesome. in with that one yeah, yeah you know we got a pair of respects when we mention his name like that by the yeah. way um yeah. but touch and wolf gave me i didn't big I, did, I didn't know they did that that's yeah 100 really cool. okay. percent. i was doing this after practice the media stuff and it was like the, tell me about the lasagna and we'll get into that at some point, too. But the ragu is where that name came from. The one that I wanted to stick or I would have been like, OK, yeah, I'm cool with that, one, which I'm fine with either one. Just call me something. OK, <laughs> um, was uh, Willie Cologne. He used to always call me Razor. Really? Razor Ramon, the wrestler, R.I.P. Scott oh, Hall, by the way. I know, that? man. That's two that in one, one segment right there. But Razor Ramon was a guy that I love. Whistling, uh, Willie was a, uh, is a wrestling fan also. Most people that grew up in the 90s, that was probably, for us, the greatest wrestling era ever. And there's not many people you know named Ramon. Definitely not a black guy you know named Ramon, though, too. Okay? <laughs> so I'm Ramon, and Willie just said, hey, Razor. That's all he ever just called me in. Uh, I, I really enjoyed that nickname right there. But it's usually Moan, Big Moan, Big Homie, Ragu, Publicly, or uh, Razor. Willie Big Cologne's ho- nickname of Razor was good. Big Homie's not a nickname. You can't put it, that on your list. <laughs> somebody like could just one. somebody could just randomly call you that. That's not a nickname. But, <laughs> but in order to be, in order to be my homie, though, we got to be really good friends. That's that's really true. Oh, though. okay. So, for, for people who are friends, that like I got a good buddy of mine, Robert Ayers, that used to play for the Broncos and Giants and and, and Tampa. He, he anytime he calls me Big Homie, you know, is what he'll call me. So um, I respond to it. I just won't respond to crazy stuff. But well, 
Speaking of crazy stuff, when we do this segment tomorrow, it's going to be Hey Little Foster. <laughs> That's what we want. <laughs> That's what I was, Little Foster. Hey, hey Little, no, L I L. Hey, L I L Foster will be what we do on tomorrow's show. Looking forward to it, Moan. Me too.